I can honestly say I've never cooked duck before, but I love it and I eat it out as much as I can, but it's what I think, I think I'm afraid to cook duck. I don't know, I feel like you have to have some sort of magic technique or train it or some angry French dude in order to actually know how to cook it right. Uh, you have to just have a certain amount of laziness. Well, you know, know that in spades, yeah, dude. Exactly. <laughs> so, duck, where are we getting these? So this duck we're getting from uh, a wonderful lady by the name of Ariane Dagan. Uh, she started a great company uh, many years ago called D'Artagnan. Yeah, of course. Uh, and she came from uh, France, came out here, was like, they don't have the product that we have out there. I'm going to do something about that. And this one is called the Rohan Duck. Great flavor profile. What we've done here is that we've gone ahead and scored the skin. I see that, uh, yeah. So why does that, you just like so take a knife? So we want to do this because we really want to kind of render out that fat. We want to get a, a crispy skin. So by so cutting... So when you open that up... Exactly. The... All that all that fat underneath the skin begins to start, to start leaching uh, out. And the part of being lazy is, you know, you want to get that right temperature. You want to have a nice little slow, low heat on there. Okay, so low right? heat. Low heat and just... Get it in there, and we're gonna hear it. So that's to like number sizzle. two on my electric stove. Is that the one? Exactly. That's how I put number it at. two on the electric <laughs> stove. You know. And what are we seasoning now, it with? Now we're seasoning it with salt, and we're gonna season it with pepper. Now pepper only on the flesh side. And what, what's the reason? We're gonna be letting this skin rock out on the pan for you know a little bit of time, and the longer that it's rocking out there, the more chance you have of like burning that pepper. And then you have like that burnt pepper flavor. All right. So for me, like when it comes to wine and duck, I don't know. Maybe maybe it's just my own my own thing, but Syrah and duck, I think, is like a match made in heaven. It's a grape varietal that has richness and, and density, but it also has kind of an earthiness and there's a spiciness too. Yeah. So I think all, all of those components really work well because duck can be a pretty assertive flavor, right? Absolutely, I mean, absolutely. It's not super gamey like lamb, but no. there is some gaminess there and I think you need something that has the ability to stand up to it. And Syrah is a varietal that has seen a new new life in, mm. in, in this country for sure, and also I think in, in France. Syrah was always like a winemaker's wine and a sommelier wine, but not necessarily for the masses. And for many years in this country, it was a difficult wine to sell. And there was one winemaker that told me a joke. He said, do you know the difference between a case of the clap and a case of Syrahs? You can get rid of a case of the clap. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, Session is a, a producer that is really you know, on, on top of their game. It's a fairly new producer to a very classic region working with all natural wine methods in the vineyard uh, vineyard management and in the cellar as well. And then Washington State has been making great Syrah for a long time. This is Charles Smith. He was like a total renegade, you know, up there. I mean, his packaging says it all. It's but the bomb. Yeah, it's <laughs> boom, boom, boom. <laughs> and alternate packaging as far as uh, um, closures go. It's a yeah. screw cap, which makes it great. Perfect wine to take on the Never road. Never That's right. And you don't need to wine over and over. Yeah, exactly. That's all there is to it. <laughs> done and done. <laughs> So uh, I think really two cool options of, of Syrah to go with duck. So we're, we're giving that some time in the pan. How, how long does how long that actually have to cook for? I will give this one about, you know, eight minutes in the pan. Just let it hang out there, really render out, get that skin nice and crispy. And at the very end, we'll just flip it over, get a, a couple kiss with some butter and some garlic, and then uh, let it hang out for a little bit. Awesome. So we've rested this duck now for about 10 minutes. And now you can cut it. And so now you can cut it. At this okay. point, you're going to just take a sharp knife. Right? Yeah, you can see how the skin is really tight to it. That there's exactly, not a lot of fat. You're exactly. right, the fat's, the fat's essentially gone, right? Exactly. I mean, that skin is nice and crispy. So now we're just gonna go on the plate over here, right? We're gonna take a little puree that we've made from uh, smoking blanched cauliflower. Uh, that, that's what we smoke. And then we get the almond powder uh, and heavy cream. And okay. so we let the almond powder and the heavy cream come together up to a boil and we let it rest and infuse. And then we smoke the cauliflower and then okay. we blend these things together. So then we're just gonna put this over here while it's nice and hot. We're gonna have a little salad here of endive, green almonds as well, because we want to play with like you know all the different you know possibilities of, of almonds. So just gonna get this sort of orange reduction in there, sort of sweeten up the bitter endive a little bit, give a little note. We layer in the green almonds in there to give it a little color and also sort of continue to play with that sort of bitterness and uh, just has a really nice visual. Appeal. Yeah, endive like that's that's a green that uh, for me is, is pretty bitter. But I think when you frame it right, when you add the right accompaniment to it, you can you can really use that bitterness to your favor and have it be a, a, an, another component of the dish. And what do we have here? And here we have, we've taken all the bones of the duck, we've roasted them out, we've actually then taken a Syrah wine and used that as the base for our, our duck sauce to sort of reinforce the marriage of Syrah and, how, and how, duck. How amazing, I happen, I happen to have some Syrah poured in a glass. I know, it's right? the one that I use for the sauce. <laughs> awesome, <laughs> that, that's, gonna make, that's gonna make it even, even more perfect. And there we have our duck dish, you know. It's beautiful, man. Duck, smoked almond, endive, and uh, green almonds. Beautiful. With a little uh, jus made from all of the, the bones of the duck. Sweet. So, uh, let's dig in, let's dig in. Yeah. When it comes to the difference between New World and Old World wines, you know, that idea that Old world wines are earthier, new world wines are fruitier. It makes sense. I mean, the yeah. sun shines a lot more here than it does in France, right? I mean, <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> Especially out west. That's great. Skin is so crispy, man. It's like perfect. 
the new world, like on the first bite side of the, the one from Washington State, mm -hmm. really kind of a, almost fits the lateness of this thing because this duck is coming off so like clean and, and not as gamey as one would imagine mm -hmm. it to be. But I bet you though, as soon as you get that smokiness from the almond puree, you're gonna want that old world one. Yeah, I think there's a freshness with the Charles Smith, the Washington straw, that really kind of like amplifies that, that freshness of the dish. But I think you're right, the smokiness really yeah. pops out with Sandra's side. Mm -hmm. That's what's so exciting about food and wine. People need to get over the hang up that there's only one answer. There's many answers, yeah. man. And, and exploration is the fun part. Plus you get to drink yeah. more than one wine. Why the heck wouldn't you <laughs> want to do that? The more wine, the better. Yep. Well, this is great, dude. I think, you know, it's so exciting to see that transition between what's happening in the old world and the new world and how it works with food. Absolutely. So. Well, here's the duck and Syrah. A match made in heaven. You know, during the fall, I think people often gravitate towards drinking heavier red wines. They move from the light, crisp white wines they were drinking in the summer and automatically assume that they can't drink white wine anymore, that they should only be drinking red wines.